Wow, what a guest we have for you today on this version of Author's Corner. His name is Dr. Peter Justice, and he's written a book called The Pursuit of the Personal Renaissance Experience. And I talked to him off the air, and we had such a fascinating conversation. He probably could fill up four hours on this show, but we want to get right to him so we can get to the heart of the book. Dr. Justice, thanks so much uh, for joining us. Well, thank you very much for having me on. I appreciate that. So you've journeyed long and far into some really cool, cool places. What made you decide to put this book together? Well, I had this, uh, this experience with a really simple, common kind of activity that all of us do for a couple of minutes uh, every day uh, that made me understand better where happiness came from. And as I was thinking about the experience, I just would like wake up in the middle of the night with uh, uh, my analysis of it, and I had to write things down, and pretty soon it all became this book. Along the way, the goal was just to be able to tell my children about what happiness was, and I think uh, that was probably the main reason for starting to write it. All right, so here's the million-dollar question, and really people are going to have to read your book to, to grasp it even in a, in a bigger way. But what is happiness? Well, happiness, my conclusion is happiness is all about improving oneself, and it really goes back to uh, who we are as living organisms, is that we need to improve in order to be adaptable and to prosper in our world. And that's really the genesis of happiness, is that feeling that we're getting better. And uh, that's, uh, I think, it's the essence of it, actually. So it's learning, it's growing, and it's not being stagnant, right? Exactly. We, we spend too much time uh, actually living through time rather than living in it. I talk a lot about that. A lot of our lives are spent in, in what essentially become existential voids. Uh, that is time that has lost meaning for us. And that, I found, was very prevalent in my life as I was thinking about all this. And you just really have to battle that. And the way to do that is to approach uh, each part of you everything you do with, uh, you know, more meaning and finding the meaning and becoming more deliberate about how, what you're doing in your life. Yeah, it's interesting, too, because obviously you've had massive success as a doctor and you've dealt with lots of human beings and probably having to tell them sad things and then happy things as well. And I think, and you talk about this in your book, you know, you look at fame, you look at money and you look at all, all of that. But if you don't truly find that meaning and that's what you express in your book, you won't ever really be happy. Am I right? That is absolutely true, and I think you've really hit on a very, very important part of this. And, and it's, like I said, interesting because you were obviously um, well-educated, you, you pursued a passion, and then you realized, like you said, you realized one day, okay, what am I going to leave my sons? What am I going to tell my sons? And was that rewarding for you to know that you leave them... Um, this idea of happiness and what they can do as they pursue what they're doing in their worlds and oh, well, it can be different for them? Oh, absolutely. I mean, what is our purpose as, of human beings but to uh, preserve for our offspring uh, or help them find their way in life and make them just as happy as you can become? I mean, that's where most of the meaning of what we do in life comes from. Absolutely. Um, I agree. Um, we want to say that, again, we're speaking to Dr. Peter Justice. The book is called The Pursuit of the Personal Renaissance Experience, Finding Opportunities for Happiness in the Ever-Present Now. I like that part, the ever-present now. Is that because someday is what we always say to ourselves? That's right. You've got to live in your moments. You have to find out exactly who you are. You're, I mean, everybody is multidimensional. We all do different things. We all control different processes. But unless we understand all of those things in depth and the nature of those things, we can't really work on ourselves. We can't really get better. We can't really fulfill that whole notion of living better now unless we're, you know, unless we're engaged in self-improvement in the now. And so for you, what was that journey like, the self-improvement journey? Well, I, I think that what, when, I, when I first started 
thinking about this and formulating the theory about happiness as we've just talked about, I realized that I was actually myself living through time, not just going through motions, doing things, but not finding all the pers- all the um, dimensions of self, not appreciating those things in a way that would help me become better at all those things. So I was living for rewards, just like we do at work. Uh, we sometimes just go through motions because we know where there's a reward, there's going to be some money at the end of the pay period, but we forget you know, what we're doing actually in the time leading to that reward. And unless we appreciate those things, unless we fully understand who we are at those times, we can't be happy. We're going to find out that we're going to feel empty the time before the pay, you know, the, the paycheck comes in or the, the reward for what we do comes in becomes emptier and emptier. And once I started realizing that, it changed the way I approached my whole day. Ooh, that is powerful. So in changing the way you approached your day, give us a tip Mm -hmm. there, Doc. What can everybody listening, and of course they're going to get your book, but what can they do right now as they approach their day? What, What I think basically what you have to do is focus on your all the dimensions of self in, in, in those times. You, if you have a job, basically you, you can break it down into components. If you look at modern life, you find that people are, are, for example, always acting in relation to someone else. We have relationships. So we spend actually most of our day in relationships with other people. And then what you have to do at that point is just look at the nature of that in your work. You know, who, who do you have customers? Do you have co-workers? Do you have bosses? Do you have people who work under you? All those are important things where you spend time and effort. And if you work on those things, your relationships with people around you, that's where you can get uh, you know, the most uh, back for your self-improvement because that's where you spend most of your time. Of course, you do things specifically. There's some technical aspects uh, we have, of course, in medicine, we do procedures and we do physical exams. And again, focusing on all those little details of self is where this is going to happen. And I think that's the thing that people miss. They just kind of live through those things. They've learned how to do it or someone has told them how to do it. And they're not really looking at those things and trying to get better themselves at it. We're speaking with Dr. Peter Justice, and the name of his book that you can pick up on Amazon is The Pursuit of Personal Renaissance Experience, Finding Opportunities for Happiness in the Ever-Present Now. Once you made that switch that you just described, how different was your life? Oh, amazingly different. Um, Would go through a day and you would just feel fulfilled. You know, I think happiness is that feeling of fulfillment as you, again, you, you become better in all these aspects of self. And unless you're doing that, you really can't be happy. Unless you are constantly recreating yourself and looking for opportunities for that, you're not going to be happy. Mm, that's powerful. That's like a tweetable moment. So I think we've weaved that in the conversation, what people can take away from it. But what do you truly hope? When you sat down, you wrote this book, you thought of your sons and your family, and you thought of a much bigger um, world that could also benefit from this. What do you hope people take away from reading your book? Well, I hope that they have a template in which they can use to look at their own lives and And then, again, live in their moments and, and again, you know, improve, identify things that they can, they can work on. You can't do everything at once. You've got to do little steps at a time. And, and once you start doing that, you're going to feel this sense of fulfillment and happiness. And I, I just think it's so basic to humans that, you know, that this, that this is powerful, that, that they will, they will find uh, fulfillment and enjoyment. And I hope in the book, I think, uh, helps them because um, there's there's a lot of examples from contemporary culture where my what I say is sort of back up and things that people could have a reference to, uh, and I think it it does help uh, convey the message. 
Yeah, so isn't it interesting that it's the one thing that somehow we leave off and you see it all the time. Doctor, I'm sure you do. You deal with a lot of people and it's such a powerful, powerful message and it's and it really is easy to follow along. The book is called The Pursuit of the Personal Renaissance Experience, Finding Opportunities for Happiness in the Ever-Present Now. Pick it up and change your life today. Doc, thanks so much for joining us. Oh, I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, and thank you to everybody for listening to this version of the show.